Yes, yes, yes. Don't forget to check out Doggy Diamonds No Filter, the actual audio version of this podcast on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. The links for those are right in the description box right below. You should already be in tune. You should be subscribed. I ain't got to be telling y'all this every day, man. Y'all should be telling me, oh, I heard such and such. That's what y'all should be doing. Also, for only $100, I promote whatever you need on my social medias and my website. That's my Twitter, Facebook, Insta Stories, YouTube community, and my website, like I said, www.doggydiamondstv.com. Hit me up on Instagram at Doggy Diamonds for your promo, serious inquiries only. Must be cash app ready. And, yo, I only seen like 300 people signed up. Come on, man. Y'all got to do better. This is why y'all not getting the alerts. All you got to do is go to www.theinterviewking.com, sign up for the email list to get new content. So this is what I'm going to do today. Being that my phone is dying, I don't have time for an intro. So this is what we're going to do really quick. Toya, how you doing? Hey, I'm doing good. How are you? I'm great. Could you tell the people who you are? My name is Latoya Gaines. I am the daughter of Miss Rosie Gaines, who was in Princess Band, the New Power Generation. And what is she? If you guys don't know who she is. She sang Diamonds and Pearls and a whole bunch of other stuff with him. Yo, damn. So you you also revealed to me in behind the scenes in the video, she was holding a child. Who was the child she was holding? In the Diamonds and Pearls video, um, she was holding Janae Aiko's sister in her lap. They kept trying to give her the, the little kids that was not black. And my mom was like, no. And she put them down and she picked up the two little chocolate girls, which were, they were light skinned, but they chocolate to my mama, was Janae Aiko's sister and another little beautiful girl. And that was a crazy story that I even heard Janae Aiko tell about Diamonds and Pearls. Wow. That is, that is, that is amazing. So, um, y- your, your mother, um, toured. Um, did you ever go on the tours? Um, I got to fly out some places on tour, but I was in school, so I had to go, you know, when it was school time, I was going to school. And um, when I was on break, when it was summer, then I would fly everywhere and meet them out on tours and things like that. So yes, I did get to do some of it. So wh- wh- where did you grow up at? Um, I am originally from Pittsburgh, California, the Bay Area. Um, but I grew up in between once my mom signed a prince in the late eighties, I was back and forth between Minnesota and the Bay area. What the hell is Minnesota like? Oh, very white and a very, <laughs> cause I was in the suburbs. I was in Chanhazen, Minnesota. I went to Chaska high there. Um, it was very cold and it was very quiet. Uh, you know, actually it was like Prince was the most popular thing in Minnesota. Wow. So, so you was in Paisley Park? Yes. I got, so I got to grow up inside and around Paisley Park. I was always in Paisley Park uh, on a daily, terrorizing that man's clothes and all kinds of stuff I wasn't supposed to be doing because I was bored. I was like one of the only kids in that joint. So, yeah. So, I so to, I was there. So being in Paisley Park, who were some of the famous people you've seen come through? Oh, man. So the biggest, um, thing that I've seen happen at Paisley Park is when they filmed Graffiti Bridge. So then all of the legends were there. George Clinton, David Staple, of course, Morris Day in the time. Um, uh, Charlie Murphy would come through there. I met Eddie too. Eddie didn't come. I met him actually at an after party um, and Dave Chappelle. Um, but Prince was always throwing his own parties. He really didn't party too much with the industry. He threw his own thing. And so there is always a list of celebrities, you know, coming in and out of Paisley Park constantly. So you met like Apollonia and them too? Oh, yeah. I miss yes, Apollonia, uh, Maite, um, Carmen Electra, actually. If, for those who don't know, Carmen Electra started off, she was rapping. Prince produced a whole rap album on Carmen Electra on Paisley Park before she became this big actress model that she is today. Wow, I ain't, whoa, 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 you just gave me something. I had no idea about that. That is interesting as hell. Okay. Yes. So so you you grew up in there. Did you get bit by the music bug because it's in your lineage and you were around it? Did you get bit by the music bug? I got totally bit by the music buzz. I was blessed enough to be able to participate in the opening of the Glam Slam. I was on stage with my mom 
um, opening that thing the first night. I was up there on the stage. It was really awesome. But yeah, of course, I, I've been doing music all my life. Um, I just was not allowed in the industry unless it was through my mom. She was not having it. So why, so, so why your mother ain't allow you in the industry, in your opinion? My mom did not allow me in the industry because she felt like it was not a place for children. She felt like it was just um, full of demonic and and grown up things that children did not need to participate in, be around or know about. And so she protected me. Like I did get to do a lot of things like write for her when she was on Motown and um, sing a lot of her background work and, you know, do all that kind of stuff. But she was not going to allow me to shop deals and, and have my own deal without her being there. She was always touring herself. So she told me that was a no, no. And most of the kids ended up, you know, on drugs and alcohol and, she just felt like it was, she wanted me to be a kid. She wanted me to be able to have my childhood. So was there any opportunities that you wanted to do that your mother was like, oh, hell no? The biggest one that I got um, young was Disney, uh, the Mickey Mouse Club. And she was like, hell no, because who's going to live in Florida with you um, while I'm touring? You're not going to have handlers. Like, you're not having none of that. So that was a no. That was a big no. I was upset about it. Um, but I'm very thankful now that I know and I understand why she said that to me, you know, um, today. Because I, now I understand what goes on in the industry that I didn't understand that when I was young because she wasn't telling me that. She was just letting me be a kid. She was letting me have my innocence about, you know, how I felt about famous people in the music industry. So she did not tank that because she felt like I was too young, you know, to tell me all those those things. Did you... um? So did you ever meet like Michael Jackson, anybody like that? I'm I'm gassed. Did you ever meet Michael Jackson? So so my mom, before she got with Prince, what people don't know is she was signed to Epic Records before mm. Prince in the eighties. And she had her own solo deal. Don Cornelius was her first big manager. Wow. Um he got her the record deal with Epic and she had an album that came out on Epic called Caring. Mm. So so in that time Michael had thriller. Mm. And Thriller exploded. And Epic wasn't like a real huge label. Like they didn't have enough people to, to handle that kind of explosion because for Michael, it was global. Um, and so everybody else who was signed to Epic in that time kind of got shelved. But they gave my mom um, uh, uh, an option. They said, well, you could come and play in a band with Michael then. You know, my mom was real familiar with all the Jacksons, with Jermaine, and she used to hang out with Janet and stuff. Um, cause they, you know, her and Michael, they're label mates. And so she turned that down because she said Michael wasn't going to give her her own front time. Hmm. So she, she was like, so she didn't want to do that. So, and she ended up signing over with Prince by, it, it, that was an accident. She didn't actually go there to sign with him. She actually got called to Paisley Park by Levi Caesar, um, and Eric, um, to come and sing a demo for the Pointer Sisters. Oh, wow. They were trying to sell a song to the Pointer Sisters. So they called my mom to come to Paisley Park to sing that demo. And Prince was walking around Paisley Park and he heard her singing. Mm. So when he heard her singing, he went in the studio. And then he like, who is that? And so they told her, they told him who my mom was. And they kind of was upset because they wanted to sign my mom themselves. But they knew that once Prince saw her, it was over. Mm. And like, he took her into the into the big rehearsal hall that they have in um, Paisley Park. And they were, like, both showing off. I'll, I'll just say showing off. So Prince was playing piano. My mom played piano. He played the guitar. She played the guitar. He got on the drums. She got on the drums. And he was like, what the hell? And, and they both, you know, singing. And he was like, you know, you wanna, you're want to, you hired. You want to work for me? Like, come over here. And so she, she didn't even come back home. Like, he sent for her stuff, and she was there ever since then. Wow, that is crazy. Um, so how tall is Prince? <laughs> how tall was Prince? That's what I wanted to okay. know. Okay, I'm gonna be and I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna be totally honest. So he like four eleven without the heels. Damn. So with his heels on, he a good five two. You know, five two, maybe five four if he got on some higher platforms. But he's really a really like yeah. He's he was really. I was shocked. Wow. So I met him. I was like, um, I was like. 10 or, or maybe 9 going on 10 the first time I ever met him and saw him and the first thing he ever said to me was ooh you're tall wow <laughs> <laughs> I 
<laughs> Everybody be told of him, right? How, um, did, did did he really have that deep voice in purpose in person? Yes, he did, and he talked real monotone. Unless he was cracking a joke, he was real monotone. He was real like and, and spontaneously goofy. Wow! So he was really he was a lot of fun. He wasn't fun for people who worked for him because he wasn't playing, and you had to be on point, and he would find you and all kind of stuff. He like if you worked for him, he was very he was very very professional. Um, and you had to be professional working amongst him. He didn't play with that, but he was playful. He was he he liked to laugh and stuff. So you're saying you saw him play basketball too? Yes, in his heels. What? No. He had a court. He had a court in Paisley Park. <laughs> he had a court. He played basketball in heels. Yes. What the hell is going on? So all that stuff that we see is not capped. In. No, that's not capped. That's real. That's real. That's real. That's real. What? Wow. He really wanted to be a professional NBA player. And I remember him even taking my mom to a bunch of the games. They would go to the games and stuff. He's a diehard basketball fan. so And he was really good at basketball. So that was not cap. He was really good. Yeah, you did say you met Charlie Murphy too, right? You did say that, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Eddie Murphy too. Yeah, yeah. So um, your, your, your mother, um, it, how was this industry... Was this industry kind to her, in your opinion? Um, I don't feel like the industry is kind to anybody, mm -hmm. in my opinion. I feel like um, the industry is not fair. It's not about the artist. It's not about your talent. It's not about your artistry. Um, there is nothing. There is nothing genuine about the business in the industry. It's a strict. It's a strict pinhole game. It's a slave trade game mm -hmm. like you know it's you're famous without money and you know they they tax you they do they money launder through your name basically mm. you know what i mean so they try to get you to sign to these big budgets so they can launder through your name mm. so if you're going to take a hundred million dollar deal they can launder all that money through you even if you didn't even use 10 percent of that money you signed a deal saying that you did mm. So it's real dirty. It's a dirty, dirty business. And that's how come Prince went through his um, time with Warner Brothers and he wrote Slave on his face, you know. Because any time that you're creating and you are you are the band, you are the creator, you are the artist, and you're only getting two pennies, seven, seven cents a record, and you're selling millions of records, then you are in a slave trade. Yeah. No, I agree with that. I agree with that. Um so with, with 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 your mother what was her exit from the industry because we heard her we all know diamonds and pearls like we that's like you know anthem uh uh maybe top 100 songs of all time classic song what was her exit from the industry well she really didn't exit like on her on her own she exited because she got something happened to her and she suffered from mental illness mm. um, but she was still going she actually after Prince she had several hits over in Europe she was signed to a record label over there called Big Bang Records and she was on top of the pops over there like three different times she had a lot of hits her stuff was put on all kind of soundtracks and movies and she even did a goofy movie with Tevin like she worked did some work for Disney um, she did work for the Adams Family soundtrack. She did all kind of stuff. So wow. she would have still been she would have still been going because she's known globally if she wouldn't have got suffered from, you know, what happened with her with the mental illness happening. Do you um, think do you think the 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 uh the industry or what was she was going through or some of the things contributed to um what she went through mentally? I know for a fact that the industry played um a huge part because the industry, you know, it chews you up, it spits you out, just to, it, it, you know, just to build you up, to break you down again, like, you know, so she definitely suffered through the music industry, like anybody who's in it, they understand, like, you go through a lot to get where you are, you know, um, when you do get somewhere in the industry, and it's tough, you can be real talented, it doesn't mean that you're gonna, you're gonna pop. It don't mean you're gonna. You, it don't mean you're gonna have anything to show for it if you don't have the right people. If you don't have the right knowledge. If you don't know your business. Um, if you have dirty people working for you behind the scenes, like managers and lawyers that that just they're embezzling from you and taking from you. I mean, it it does a lot. It does a lot to your mental. 
you know, um, to deal with that day after day after day. So, so let me ask you something, not to really be um, personally in her business. Um, all the stuff that she done, um, uh, 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 let me see, a uh, big record like that, being a part of uh, the, the, the MPG, touring like crazy. I know their tour schedule is crazy. Was your mother well off? She did. I'm going to say this. I'm going to say that Prince, um, everybody was on salary. So everybody who was a part of New Power Generation got a salary. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, now that he's gone, they do, they get some royalties. There was some things going on with the royalties after his passing because of the co-American banking coming in, taking over the estate. Mm -hmm. But now the estate is back in good hands. Um, and I got word that they're going to be re-releasing some things. And I can't say what, but it's, it's going to be something big. Um, and I think that everybody's going to be okay. But as she was in the band with Prince, yeah, she was she was more well off than she had ever been, like, uh, working with him. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. He changed He changed our lives. Just put it that way. Like, my mom did a lot of stuff, though. Like, even before him, she worked with the whispers and confunction and i remember being around them all when i was young and little um you know like it, she did so much stuff she had people come and sit in with her like maxine from in vogue just sing background for her like wow she had worked already with so many legendary people she had tony 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 come and sit in for her before they blew up you know what i mean like it was it, she did she it was like so crazy if you if i go down the line of of talent that has worked with well, my mom before she was even known to the world you'll be like wow that's crazy so um but yeah yeah because because we i want to let the world know we did not plan this interview we end we up, uh, yeah. We end up, uh, we end up uh, text each other. You was like, "Yo, you good?" I was like, "Yeah, I'm good." And then I was like, "Hold on," and I called you and I let you know about another interview that I just did. And I'm like, "Hold up, Toya, nah, you got too much valuable information <laughs> for us not to put it out there." We was going to talk about, we was, we will talk about some other things in the future, um, dealing with the industry. But I really wanted to do a ode to your mother because the fans want to know. Um, many of us love the record who heard it. And even the new fans probably don't even know that that's your mother. And she's not really spoken about in the culture. She's like a lost voice and a lost talent that mm -hmm. played a mm -hmm. big role in many people's lives. So being that you, her only, you're her only child, right? Yes. Wow. That's crazy. I am her own. I am the only one. <laughs> Yo, and when you told me, because you DM her one day and you was like, and I was like, holy sh... And then when I looked you up, because I did look you up, I'm like, yeah, that really is her daughter. Oh, wow. That's, that's, nah, because I thought you was you capping. Nah, hell no. I think I think everybody is cap. Look, where my caps? I ain't but, Oh, here we go. I got one cap. I think everybody is cap, as y'all know. You know what I'm saying? So when you was uh, able to, when I was verifying it, everything is good. So before I let you go, um, I, I, promised, I promised you that I wasn't going to hold you here, ask you any um, crazy questions. Um, how is your mother doing right now? Right now, my mom is enjoying um, retirement. She, you know, it was a issue with her because she didn't want to take her medication and things like that. But since she has been taking it, she's been much better. Um, she's been enjoying life much better. And there, for all you Prince fans and whoever's going to go to celebration this year at Paisley Park, they are doing a huge honor to my mother mm. at Paisley Park at Prince Celebration this year. And I will be there. Dope. To, you know, honor my mother and to, you know, give her all the love that everybody had for her. She she's she don't want to come, so you know. So you gotta go so, represent. So I have to go represent me and I'm taking my son because he never got to be around Paisley Park. He never you know, I'm just mom to him. So he never seen all the glitz and glamour and things that I've seen. So this is gonna be his first time. He all, he's also a musician too, so this send, is gonna be really the blood. good for him. Mm -hmm. There's nothing, nothing you could do about it when it's in you, when it, when it comes from grandma to, to to mother to. So do you you have writing credits out there? Yes, I do. Oh, so you get royalty too? Let me get two dollars to on um, Friday or something. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, do did you do any soul? Did you so later on? Did you do any music that's out there? Oh did, man, I, yeah, I was more in the hip hop community. I've done a lot of hooks for all of these. Most of these Bay Area rappers that you hear, these big ones, 
Like, I got songs with them, like, from the 90s all the way up till date. It's like, I, so I was doing all this stuff, and uh, I worked with some L.A. artists, too. Like, I had a song with The Game and JT, Bigger Figure, and um, I did stuff with The Jacker. I don't know if you guys know who that. Yes, rest in here. peace, rest in peace. Yes, rest in peace. I grew up with him, too, so... You know, um, I had stuff with him and Turf Talk and Keep the Sneak. Wow. And I worked with Sam Bostick and I worked with, um, I mean, Tone Capone. Man, hey, you naming started. all the legends of the Bay. Shout out yeah, to the Bay, like too. I, yeah, like I, I've been, that's what I do. I've been doing this forever. My mom didn't, she didn't like it. She didn't approve of it. But I, you know, music is in my soul. I couldn't, I had to at least do some, some studio work. I'm like, look, I, I got to sing or write or do something. So, you know, I kept that momentum going as far as, uh, you know, writing and, and staying busy in the studio. So, yeah, I've been been doing that. Okay, so before I let you go, um, what... Oh, wait, let me tell you one more thing. Go ahead, go ahead. Like, sure, what? sure. I'm going to keep you let forever. Me you my, let me tell you who my cousin is. Who? He's in the industry. Who? I want to give a shout out to my cousin, Ro James. What's up with you, cuz? That's my cousin. Who? <laughs> Ro James. You don't know Ro James? You think permission? No, I don't know who that is. I gotta look that up now. What? Sing, look it up. He sing permission. You said he sang us. Yes, his hit was permission. He sang a lot of stuff, Adidas and all that. But permission was his hit hit. See now, now you you stumped. See, I hate the fact that I believe that I know that I'm a hip hop historian, and I know a lot. And I didn't know that. So now I'm going to look that up. My, oh, my, my, my moderator, Kelly Mills, said, wow. See, people in here saying, wow. So now I feel like a clown real quick. Oh, man. Now I'm going to look that up. But that's your physical cousin? That's your cousin? Yes, that's my cousin. I was just saying it so you can see, like, it run through the family. Yeah, that's my cousin. How y'all cousins? He, um, we're cousins because that's his, his uncle is, I mean, his father and my uncle are brothers. Oh, shh. <laughs> so they said Road Jay in here saying Road James. They saying this song. Wow, that, that's dope. Now I'm going to look that up. See? Oh, he's a singer. Yeah. He's not a rapper. He, he's a singer. He's a singer. All oh, right. So you rapper. can't. So so I get my hip hop card back. Yeah, sometimes I'll be. Yeah, but you should know, though, because he signed. He got into the industry because he signed um, to Kanye. That's how he first got in, was through Kanye West. Sometimes I don't be knowing about all of that. Uh, smooth music and stuff i'll be sticking to my classics so sometimes i don't even know about none of that but um shout out to your cousin um and again if you don't mind you might get bombarded a little bit but i guess it's okay do you mind giving your social media out oh go ahead no 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 you give it out i ain't giving it out you give it out so my, my social media is <laughs> my instagram is toya gains that's all it's t-o-y-a-g-a-i-n-e-s on my instagram that's it spelled just like that toya gains Mhm. Mm okay. All right, Toya. See, I, I told you. See, I did. I was good, right? I didn't. I didn't go crazy. Right? Yeah, you was real good. See? You was real good. But I know you gonna get me when I get back. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, when you come back from this event, we gonna talk, talk. We gonna go there. But we um, talk, talk. yeah. But um, you know, the first time I spoke to you, I, I always let you know how much um, I loved your um mother, loved her voice, and um, I wish you know, I wish that's the first thing I said. How's she doing? You know, so um, you know, let's. Yes. The, I know the audience love her and they wish her well. And we're glad that you're out here to speak for her, to hold her honor and her legacy down. Um, and that's what it is, Toya. So I'll hit you later on. Let me let me um, close out. And um, my phone is okay. dying anyway. So I, I appreciate you too. Yes, sir. So you was on Doggy Down. Okay. See, see, look, you was on. Oh, and we got some. We got other and stuff. And I love you, and I'm your fan. Don't forget yes. to say that I'm your fan. I've been listening to you for years. Like Doggy Diamonds, is he the truth? He's Yo, the when she listen, truth. she hit me on DM one day, and I'm like, who is this? She was like, I'm like, Yo, I was just high. I was high. <laughs> Cause I love, like I said, her mom, I think, yeah, I love that. You know why? Cause I wanted to sample it, right? And at one point, I didn't know how to catch it, and then Cameron did it, and I was like, yo, how did he catch that? But that's a whole other story. Wayne did it too. Oh, what? See, so that means anyway, we'll 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 talk about that. All right, so I'm gonna sign you out, and um, I'll talk to you later. All right. Thank you. All right. You're welcome. Bye. All right. Yeah, so that's my home girl. So uh, I decided, I was like, yo, this is impromptu. That's why I didn't announce. I didn't do no artwork. I didn't do nothing. You see the chat is a little light, which that's YouTube playing because 
we got two, we got a quarter million people. At least more people should have gotten um, notifications. But look, look at the information we was able to indulge in this interview real quick. Uh, shout out to Rosie Gaines. Uh, stay well. Be well. Um, I definitely love her voice. Um, and that's that's my joint. But now I got to do a little bit of research. And I love that because, you know, I love to learn. Uh, I got another interview that's going to drop tomorrow that's uh yeah it's gonna go up let me see if the homie um yeah you know what i'm saying so um it is what it is uh i am doggy diamonds uh this is what i do i do interviews you know i like to do my podcast where i run my mouth but i do interviews and i like to bring you interviews that you never heard from people that you never heard that you might want to hear from so yeah we don't do all these celebrity interviews and we don't chase people but Again, this this is fun for me, you know what I'm saying? Because imagine if we can speak to one of Michael Jackson kids. Not saying Rosie Gaines is Michael Jackson, but imagine we can speak to one of Michael Jackson kids or somebody that we might have grew up hearing their songs and, you know, her only child, which is her daughter, is able to speak for her. So I think that that's dope. I appreciate it. And this is why I love my job. This is why I love what I do. And this is for the culture. So, you know, we got to get these stories out there because who else is going to tell the story? You know, who is going to tell the story? So make sure you share. This is very important. Um, if you if you got a Facebook, share it on your Facebook. All you got to do is go below and hit share. Share it on your Facebook. Share it on your Twitter. Share it on your Instagram. It's a way that you can share it on your Instagram because you find out how to share everything else from your Instagram. And what you can do, you can go to uh, Doggy Diamonds TV. Um, Doggy Diamonds TV Instagram page. So a clip of this will be on the Instagram page. And what you can do is take the clip that's on the, that's going to be on the Instagram page and then you can share it in your stories and tell people to go to the YouTube. It's very, very simple, but the shares are very, very important. The likes is cool. I love the likes, but the shares are very, very important. So look, only I can do a classic 20-minute interview. Classic 20-minute interview. With that, I bid y'all good night. I appreciate y'all. Let's run these numbers up, though, because this is this is – we got to get stuff like that up. Yo, until next time, I'm Doggy Diamonds. Peace. <laughs>